Hey everybody, Todd Dana Kearns here again. Today my very special guest is a guy I played with uh, with a run with a band called Hookers and Blow featuring Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses and Alex Grassi from Quiet Riot. But today we talked to uh, a very good friend of mine from Typo Negative, that makes him a legend, Danzig, and now filling in and replacing the now gone but never forgotten Frankie Benali in Quiet Riot. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear friend, Johnny Kelly. go big brother's watching you yes oh my gosh it is really great to see you it's been a minute <laughs> yeah 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 it has been a while and life and got we, we, crazy busy for you i don't like it's just getting busier and busier it's it's peaks and valleys isn't it though you know like like now like with uh you know it's you know unfortunately with covid yeah well that's true uh, yeah. like uh there's been pockets of where things got busy and then there's been a, a lot of downtime. This of is, course. Yeah. Like I was thinking about it yesterday. This, that was probably the longest I had been home probably in, in my entire professional career ever. Yeah. I think ever. Was, yeah. Yeah. I know. It's, at it's, least, at least 25 years. Where crazy. Was, right. Where there wasn't any, any kind of traveling at all. Yeah, it's it's really crazy. I mean, it, it it sort of makes I don't know where you're at at this, but I feel rusty as far as the um, you know, traveling, being away, that kind of thing. Like I just feel like okay, oh, this is what I do, but it, you know, I did. Yeah, it was uh, like a. I'm still getting acclimated to the way that like uh, like with Quiet Riot and how they how they travel and how you know how things work. Like you know, like playing on the weekends. I've been used to. Uh, you know, for, for uh, all of my career, where it was, you know, you took one flight and yeah. then you were just away from home for weeks at a time. And then you took, you know, you're on a bus and, and then you took a plane home. Now it's flights every morning. And <laughs> it's, it's bananas, right? I think that, yeah. you know, I have a lot of conversations with my friends, you know, now doing the weekend warrior game. And it's yeah. actually way more exhausting than, you know, than yeah. just kind of going out six weeks later, you go home for a break and then you go back out yeah. or whatever. But the idea of, you know, I don't know, flying up to like, you know, Detroit and then connecting you know, your connector and then you're flying out to wherever. <laughs> and then you got to drive from wherever you landed out to a casino or something out in. Right. There's like a two hour drive involved. And you're like, what? Something. by the time you get home, you're just a wreck. And then you realize I've only got like two, three days and I got to do this all over again. Yeah. Sundays don't count anymore. They're just, no. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I get home and I mean, it's great because uh, like, you know, I get home pretty relative, most of the time, relatively early in the morning true yeah but then that's it then it's like i'm a zombie for the whole day like i, I, I can't function I, I can't do anything i'm just like oh you know what <laughs> where's where's the ride what where what time do we have to be at the airport like you're still in that head it's like yeah. when, when sound check when <laughs> and your wife's like you're home turn the tv on wife, watch the game like i'm turning turn around to my wife what's the what's what's the show after show food tonight? <laughs> she's like get your own food <laughs> yeah. and then monday monday you get back into it and then like wednesday or thursday you're back on a plane again of i mean course. there is something kind of cool about that also to like you know like get to be able to play every week and then you, you get to be home a lot of times too. Exactly. Nice, yeah. you, you it's know. kind of a balance, really. It's it's sort yeah. of in a lot of ways, it's the best of both worlds that perhaps we've always kind of wanted. I don't know. You know, it's sort of. I've, I've always liked the idea of having having a uh, you know uh, like a you know like a gig like where I got to play every night, but then I was able to go. I know. Sleep in my own bed. Exactly. The only thing missing now is the Star Trek transporter where you can literally go <laughs> yeah. from your couch to the stage that and then back, to your awesome. yeah. <laughs> back to your couch. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I, I was thinking about you because, uh, you know, because you've been around a minute like me where it's kind of like, have there ever been moments where you just thought, well, I guess that's it, you know, like, I guess I'm not doing this anymore. Because I find it fascinating that in a lot of ways you're busier than ever. And, and in some ways, I'm not quite sure where you're where you're standing in terms of like say Glenn Danzig's phone calls versus quiet yeah. riots, phone calls. Yeah. And if you're suddenly finding yourself like spread thinner than ever, but 
I wonder sometimes if there's a feeling of like, yeah, you know, I had a good run. I'm going to go and, you know, be a roofer. And then all of a sudden the phone rings and then you're just busier than ever. Dude, since the first tour I ever did, I've always <laughs> thought that. Yeah, I know. I you're mean, always even, like. <laughs> even, even at the height of, uh, you know, typo negatives popularity, it's like, you know, like we would, we would go on a tour. Like, uh, for instance, like on, on the, like I joined the band, like right after Bloody Kisses came out. When I joined the band, the whole premise was don't quit your day job. It's not that kind of band. Right, right. We were, it wasn't a touring band. It wasn't anything like that. So it's like, all right, cool. You know, whatever. I just wanted to be in the band. So I didn't care. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You know? And, uh, and so then, you know, Peter agreed, like, you know, convinced Peter to go on tour. And so then we went on tour. We, we did like a six week tour and then we went back to work. It's, all right. That's it. You know, we did the tour. Great. Yeah. Went back to work. And then, uh, I get a call from my manager while I'm at work. Uh, can you get off work? And I was, why? And he's like, well, uh, we got this tour with Nine Inch Nails. We got this offer. Their, their support band just broke up and the tour starts in three days. Oh, man. And it, it was a short run. It was only like, it was only like 12 shows. So it was like, okay. We do the tour. Like, all right, I guess that's it. You know, right. go back to work. Manager calls again. Uh, been offered the Motley Crue tour. And I was like, well, why would we do that? And which is a whole other thing of what, what a weird bill called. that is. I was right, going to say, yeah. yeah. And uh, he's like, okay, we're going on tour. But before that, we're going to go out for a few weeks on our own, you know, do our own thing. We're going to hit the clubs again. And it's like, okay. So then we, we would, you know, we did that tour. We knew that we were going out with Motley Crue for the summer. So I knew that something was going to be, you know, going on there. The tour ends with Motley Crue. Like, guess it's time to go find a job and go back to work. And then, you know, then we got the Danzig tour. Then we, you know, like we, whatever, we went to Europe. And then it's like, you know, so then that record was done. And we knew, like, you know, the record at that point, you know, after every tour ended, we were like, well, I guess that's it. Right, right. And then, and then something else would, would come in. Something else would happen. It'd be like, all right, get back on the bus. And then we were only home, like when we did a uh, when we did the October Rest record. We were home for like six months, and we we did that. And then it was like, what's going to happen now? Like, you know, what are we doing? Whatever. And like, well, we didn't even finish mixing the record, and we get a call to go out with Ozzy and Sepultura. Right, right. right? Back on the bus. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then we like we weren't sure at that point. Like, you know, we knew that the band the band you know had its own had its following, and that we you know. We had a gold record under our belt and we were, we were doing our own tours, but every time a tour ended, we were like, I guess that's it. That must, you know, this must be it. You know, whatever, something was going to happen that, that was going to, you know, you know, where it was going to be called a day. That, that would be the end of it. And then you, you, whatever, move on to the next part of my life or, you know, like of for course. all of us, we, yeah, we yeah. never really knew what was going to happen. And every time the tour bus stopped, we always thought that that would that would be it. Is this then, like a is this like the uh, perspective of just realistic New York guys who are like? I you, think so. I mean, we were all like that. We thought for sure that something was going to put it put an end to it. You know, sure. I mean, ultimately it did with Peter passing away. Of course, yeah. Uh, and there was a point with Peter. We thought that could have happened at any minute. Yeah, that's a tough and, one. Yeah, you know, which was the like the irony in it was that he was like probably his healthiest, like living his healthiest lifestyle when he passed away, his healthiest lifestyle that he had been living for ye in years. Right, right. Like, you know, well, wasn't I there? Mean, there were didn't you tell me about like Peter was the one that was the most difficult to get on the road? Like he had a really good like city he job. Did, he, he had a city job, and he he works for the parts the par parks the parks department. department he, yeah, he had no. Uh, no desire to you know be what he ultimately became he loved like having like structure and like you know like waking up at you know get up at six o'clock every morning and, you know <laughs> go to work put in the time card like you know do your job and like you know he he would he had he he was very happy with it. interesting wow and that was but there was this also this other this other side of peter where he was very creative and wanted he loved making music he loved being in the studio writing songs and stuff like that and uh, he he always felt uncomfortable uh, performing. Interesting. Wow, I would never yeah, guess that. He was he uh, he's always uh, very self conscious about his you know about his performance. 
Really? Until finally things had turned around where like, you know, like there was, you know, there, there is no structure on, on, a, on a bus, on tour. It's like, you know, no. there's always chaos. And, and uh, you know, that was like totally the opposite of everything that Peter was about. Like, you know, Peter was about like, you know, everything being organized. I mean, his food was organized. His vitamins were organized and stuff. And that was like everything was organ organization, structure and symmetry, which is totally the opposite of being in a rock band that tours. Absolutely. And it took a long time for that to be his normal life. And then when, you know, he got acclimated to that and he was like, you know, like for years and for the whole, like just about the whole run, you know, if we were on tour, he was miserable because he was away from home. We'd get home and then he'd start going crazy because he was home and wanted to be out on the road. So wherever he was, he wanted to be on the other side of the fence at all times. That's pretty common for most of us, in, in, in a, maybe not quite in that severe of a degree, but it is very common. We've gone way, fo way far forward because I wanted to start at the beginning for you, but, oh, okay. but uh, it's so hard not to, not to get right into it because, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm such a massive fan of, of that. Basically, everything that you're, you've been a part of, because it's like, you know, I'll sit there and like listen to your typo stories for, you know, for hours. But um, so you grew up in the city, uh, or where did you grow up? I grew up in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, right, right, right. Yeah, now, was, Avenue. were all the guys from the Brooklyn area or, or Queens? Yeah, we were maybe? all, uh, no, we were all from Brooklyn. We literally could walk to each other's homes. That's how Is that we right? Wow. Each other. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, so like uh, parts of Brooklyn, there's like, it's everything's like an, in a grid, but the grids are in like, you know, different, you know, like the neighborhoods are in grids, but it's, right, like, right. You know, it's, it's not a very grid-like thing, the whole borough. So I lived on Avenue J, right? The numbers would go like numbered streets and then alphabetized avenues. Right. I lived on Avenue J and East 37th Street, which was right off Flatbush Avenue. Okay. Josh and Peter lived on Avenue K okay. and East 18th, East 18th Street. So it was like okay. a little bit less than a mile. I could, I could literally wow. walk, to their, walk to their house. And then Kenny lived uh, near uh, near King's Highway and like 32nd Street, which I used to walk to Kenny's house all the time when we were younger. <laughs> sure. I, I, I always kind of forget how long you've known those guys, especially Kenny. Yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah. I met Kenny. But I was in high school. Oh, wow. <laughs> we, we, were, we were friends in high school and both of us weren't playing in any bands or anything. And a mutual friend was like, you know, like these two guys aren't doing anything. Let me introduce them. Right, right. And then we started playing together, and then this was, uh, you know, years before typo. And yeah, of course, yeah. So, so when we go backwards, yeah. though, what is it that like was the drums like the first thing that grabbed you? Is that or is that like were your parents yeah. musical? Was there any of that yeah. kind of in the house or? Uh, yeah, there was there was music. Uh, you know, rock and roll was a very important part of the house. Uh, my father, oh, really? I, you know, my father was only nineteen years old when I was born. My dad, oh, there my you go. Wow. My mother was twenty. Oh, wow. And, uh, my dad, both my parents were huge Stones and Beatles fans. You know, my Ooh. mother was a JFK when they came to America, when the Beatles came to America. No way. My, my dad was still chasing the Stones around on tour when, the, but up until like when he passed away. I mean, no he passed way. away, he was very young. But yeah, my father was at the show, the Stone show, when they uh, recorded Get Your Yaya's yeah, yeah, Out. And, sure, uh, yeah, yeah. He was at the Wings Over America show when McCartney wow. played. You know, I'm surprised that my name, you know, wasn't Keith. <laughs> and the same thing, like when I when I was born and I was named I was named John. You know, they my parents named me John. I'm surprised that my brother's name wasn't Paul. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, and it was you know my father brought home. You know, my father was always always had records. I remember as a kid, if I was if I was good for the week, he'd let me have one of his records. So I'd oh, take really? like a Stones record or, or a Beatles record. I'd write my name on it. This one's fine. <laughs> and then he brought home Kiss Alive. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's a gateway that drug. Was, <laughs> yeah, I think I, it, my dad did like the Columbia House thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah, did the yeah. Columbia House thing. And he had a whole bunch of records. And they, they came in the mail. And I remember I was going through the records looking to see what he had got and stuff. And then I saw Kiss Alive. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i turn around to danny i was like my brother my brother's name is danny i turn around to danny i was like danny 
And we just took the record, ran into our bedroom, and my father never saw the record again. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, like for birthdays and Christmas and stuff, I remember uh, like uh, got Kiss Destroyer for one Christmas. Sure. And then uh, we got Kiss Alive too. And I, I remember when we got it, I, I knew like you know I knew Santa Claus had come, and I knew that this was a record. Right. Yeah. Because you like, can tell I, I it's either that or. Or a calendar, maybe you're never. Yeah. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, oh, I gotta see, I gotta see what record it is. So I opened it up. It was Kiss Alive too. So then I rewrapped it and woke my brother up and was like, Danny, Santa Claus came. Amazing. <laughs> like, <"Open> this one. <laughs> but that was uh, yeah. So it was always you know like my father got me into all of the uh, like classic rock bands. You know like. Uh, I mean, he even, he got me into Aerosmith, got me into Leonard Skinner. And, uh, he he got me into Hendrix. He got me uh, Led Zeppelin. He turned me on to. He wasn't a Black Sabbath fan. Hmm, interesting. Which I found kind of odd. Like you know, later on, just too heavy, too uh, dark, something. Uh... I think so. And uh, growing up, I lived in a two-family house, a mother-daughter house. So my grandparents lived upstairs. We lived downstairs. Sure. And uh, my uncle is a guitar player right and uh probably one of the best guitar players i've ever played with. is that right wow yeah he's he's awesome and wow uh, and he used to play like when he graduated high school he my grandmother bought him like a an acoustic stack and a gold top last fall oh wow and i remember watching him like you know practice downstairs in the basement stuff like that and uh so he was turning me on to stuff too right so, so I had the two of them and neither one of them was into Black Sabbath, which I couldn't, I couldn't, later on, I couldn't understand. Interesting. Like, you know, they just weren't into it. And, um, and then, but, you know, finding, you know, Black Sabbath a little bit later on, like, you know, with my friends and like ACDC and things like that. Sure, but yeah, like, yeah. but like the, the, the classics, like, you know, my father was a huge, huge Bowie fan. Cool. Uh, I couldn't listen to uh, Bowie like live at the tower. Yeah. I, I couldn't listen to it for decades. I was just like, <laughs> I was just like not again. <laughs> just played out. <laughs> yeah. The same thing. Like, you know, like Jesus Christ superstar. He was like, he listened to that constantly. Wow. Like, any, like, any, like, like any the original one came, or the soundtrack yeah, yeah. from the film? The, like the, the Ian soundtrack, the sound, yeah. The soundtrack from the film. Okay. And uh, like you know, he would play that, and he played it so often. I was just like, oh, it's like <laughs> I, I was like in my twenties before I could watch the movie again. Right. Yeah. And uh, what else? My my dad was a very big into Rod Stewart. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, he turned me on to the Cars. Oh, what, really? Interesting. Yeah, so yeah, even like into the on. new wave days, he was still kind of yeah, like relatively well, I mean, hip. Even then, though, like he was know, still pretty young. Yeah, he, he, he was still in his twenties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good point. He yeah, his, he was still in his twenties. So, so anyway, there was a lot of that going uh, going around the house, especially you know, like with the Stones and the Beatles. And, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And that was one of the things with typo. Like we were all into like different things, you know, right. musically. But the the things that we always agreed on was the Beatles and Black Sabbath. Okay. Yeah. So like uh, we'd be on the bus or whatever and complaining like you know like Josh did, never did not like Led Zeppelin couldn't stand Robert Plant. Interesting. Okay. So like you know he would put that on and then like you know me and Kenny would make fun of like Deep Purple or like you know like, <laughs> yeah. so there was always like this little bitch fest on the bus. <laughs> But then if you put on a Black Sabbath record, like if you put on like Master of Reality or Sgt. Peppers, everybody shut up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was it. Every, everyone would shut up. You wouldn't hear any complaints from anybody. Like, oh. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Suddenly everybody's happy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so, that's so interesting, though, because when you're in that kind of incubator with that kind of music, because yeah. it wasn't really like that for me. I mean, my parents liked music, but they weren't really like... You know, they weren't really the kind of people who were going to buy the new Rolling Stones record or the new, you know, what I'm saying like it's just oh, like yeah. they just had some ra random records. But um, when you're kind of like inundated with with that much music, it just kind of seeps yeah. into you, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it, it seems like, you know, there wasn't any kind of like. A, like, I remember, like, you know, being very young, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, whatever, whatever. I want to be a baseball player. Or sure. I want to be a fireman. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was like even. Uh, 
like, you know, being such a big Kiss fan and always wanting to be a drummer, I didn't, you know, I hadn't got the opportunity to even get behind a kid until I was like 11 years old. Okay. That's still very young. I mean, it, it's, yeah. is that what happened? Or did, did they eventually throw down and get you a kit or? or oh, no, it? no. My mother, my mother was completely against it. <laughs> probably totally still, probably it. to the end, I'm sure. <laughs> no, it took, it took a long, t- it took a long time to get, to get approval. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my father was always encouraged by it, but there was like, there was just absolutely no possibility of me ever having a drum set in, a, in our house. Right, right. Good point. It was yeah. absolutely, my uncle ruined it with him and his friends. <laughs> yeah, like right. I, I, I remember them. I remember them, his, like his band, they, they set up everything in the basement. They, <laughs> they, I think they made it through like two songs and my grandmother came in and threw everything, kicked everybody <laughs> out. Yeah, I bet. So now I'm coming up and it was like, you know, this, this is going to be a hot, you know, my mother wanted me to like, you know, whatever, go to school or like, you know, like get a good, you know, city job or something sure, like that. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and drums, know, are, drums was, are never quiet. It's never, you can play like yeah. guitar in your room, like quietly, but drums. Well, that, that yeah. was one of my arguments. My brother got a guitar and it was like, it's fine. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. It was like, well, I was like, Danny can have a guitar. I can't. She's like, She's like, I can't hear Danny's guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so there was a guy that lived up the block that was, you know, closer to my uncle's age. And he, he played drums. And he was, uh, he was like, do you want to learn how to play drums? Like, Shit, Peter Chris, absolutely. Of course, yeah. And so then, I, so then he, he taught me how to like, you know, like play a beat and stuff like that. And then he would do things. This guy totally corrupted me and my friends when we were, when we were <laughs> he would like, he, this, this was actually pretty funny. And I'm, I'm surprised I remember it. He would be like trying to pick up chicks. <laughs> really? but, so, so he would, he would have me in his car. He had like this, he had a bunch of cars. He got me into hot rods, got me into drums. The guy had a major impact on me, but he was a totally corrupted person. <laughs> wow. Morally, morally corrupt. But I worshipped him. He had sure, the yeah. van, like he had the 70s custom van. Like, oh, you know, yeah. Who knows what was what was going on? <laughs> so he would like he would do these things. Like he was like, I'm, I want to go meet this girl. And he had like this little MG convertible. He's like, he goes, You just go along with what I say, right? We were outside her apartment building. He goes, You just shut up and go along with whatever what I, you know, like just shut up and go along with what, what I say or else you'll never play my drum set again. <laughs> How old are you at this point? I was like 11. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. Okay. And he's like, and the girl comes down and he's like, Hey, you know, this, is this is Johnny, you know, his sister just died last week. And I've been like, you know, like keeping an eye on him and stuff. And I'm looking and she's, oh, yeah. and she's like, Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm just like, uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> And he's like, you know, don't fuck around. <laughs> so this is what he used to do to me. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it was like you know, like with that. So I didn't really start playing until like I was like fifteen. Okay. And then the op, the, there was in our neighborhood, there was a rehearsal studio, an hourly rehearsal studio, which okay. is where everybody from Brooklyn, like, you know, that played in, you know, uh, rock bands or metal bands and stuff. There was only a few places to to play. And that's how pretty much it was a very small uh, community. Yeah, sure. Only yeah, a yeah. few places. So everybody kind of knew each other. Like all, right. those, all those bands, like, you know, like Biohazard, Life of Agony, Candiria, Typo Negative. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Was Anthrax a Queens band? Where, where were they? Anthrax was more like Queens in the Bronx. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Bronx, yeah. And, yeah, it's uh, funny, because of course that is a, I mean, you you know, it's New York City, but that is a small community, especially when it's a, in the music community, yeah. So did, yeah. you didn't you didn't own a drum kit? They just had drum kits there, and you can go down there yeah, and they just had, they bash had away? Yeah, they there, and that's, that's how I learned how to play, and then I wound up working there. Oh, okay. And then uh, my, the studio had, um, updated their kits they got new kits Ludwig kits they got chrome over wood kits through, wow, uh, AJ, okay. per- through AJ Perro and we met like uh, Twisted the, Sister Bill, yeah. Bill Ludwig the third and stuff and uh, amazing wow and uh so he gave me one of the old kits no way that's how I that's how I got my first drum set I couldn't afford to buy one what and that of, was even what kind of kits were these kit. okay sure yeah yeah, yeah. Swing yeah. 
And even that, there was like a major summit in my house just to bring the drums <laughs> yeah, yeah. into the house. Yeah, right. You know, like I came home with the drums and, you know, my mother and my grandmother was like that. I was like, get my drums. <laughs> where did you get the drums? What do you think you're doing with those drums? Right. Where are those drums staying? You know, <laughs> yeah, and, my yeah, grandmother, yeah. and my grandmother's like, you're not setting those up in the house. It's like, <laughs> but they're mine and they're coming in the house. <laughs> oh. It wasn't until... Like, I remember, like, a, like there was a year where I didn't play. Like, a, like a year or two before I joined Typo. I, I just, I was like, you know what? Maybe it's not in the cards. You oh, know, interesting. I got to stop with the, you know, with the, with the hustle, you know, right. work and stuff like that. I need to get a job. And, right, you know, right. Maybe it's not going to happen. And, well, you're uh, a young man at this point, like, you know. I was like 23, 24 years right, old. Right, right, right. Were you on and, your uh, own? Were you out on your own by this point or? No, no, I just started yeah. doing this. Okay, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. <laughs> and um, I remember like, you know, telling my mother, it's like, you know, whatever, like I would just like open up the Village Voice, and just look for, you know, auditions, like, you know, who sure. needs a drummer, like, you know, whatever, go out and meet people and stuff. And I, you know, my mother was like, I was like, oh, I have this audition coming up. And it's like, you know, whatever, they got a record coming up. Blah, blah, blah. She goes, you know, if you get it, you have to move out. <laughs> i was like thanks for the support <laughs> she's hoping you get it just so you'll move out kind of thing or, or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe you know yeah. maybe that's what that's what... but i remember like uh like a, on her side of the family this it, it, there's a lot of musicians on my mother's side of the family it's okay wow. with my uncle and so mm -hmm. and my mother i remember one day like you know like we were watching like solid gold sure yeah and she's like see that guy that's your cousin. He still lives at home with his mother. <laughs> <laughs> Who was he playing with? <laughs> or... I forget, but it was like it was like a, like a, whatever the band had just come out. They got a spot. They got a thing on Solid Gold. And, oh wow! And she was like, she goes, you see all your cousins and stuff. Yeah, they all they all play. They all play instruments. They're all broke. Like, you want to you want to be like that? You're gonna do it on your own. Oh you my no god! Help from me. Oh my God! Thanks. Mom. Thanks. I kind of, I kind of love that she just was no. It wasn't some alien, bizarre thing to her. It's like no, it's tangible. She knew these people, yeah. and and she yeah. saw she that knew, it was. She knew yeah. the road that I was headed down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and she, that that that's my mom though. You know, with the tough love, you don't want to let. Sure. You don't want to take advice from me. You're gonna go and you know you're gonna learn it. You're gonna learn the hard way on your own. I can appreciate that. That's, you know, it's like as a parent now, I don't know that I really utilize that very well. But yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you want to chase your dreams? Not under my roof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. No, no, yeah. <laughs> no. Get a job, pay your bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess, you know, it's a different time, I guess. I it's don't a different time, why. exactly. It seems, it probably seems ridiculous yeah. to. Yeah people of that generation that you where well, you're going to pursue your dreams i had dreams my dreams i, I had to yeah. go get a job yeah, 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 yeah. like uh my grandfather uh right I, I worked at the post office i had gotten a job as a mailman i, I did it for like a year and then i wound up quitting to go on a good, tours and drive. that's a good job for like a normal it, person it's a good you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 however i mean the money was was terrible and at, okay. at the time i was like i was like whatever like 20 years old or something and I, I was like all right i got a good i got a good federal job i have i have health insurance you know, yeah exactly like, oh, this, yeah it's pretty cool but there was no way I could afford to live on my own. I was like, you know, right. the money wasn't there. I was like, there's no way I can get an apartment or whatever. And, and mm -hmm. then when I quit, I quit to go on tour as a drum tech for Andrew Dice Clay. Wow. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's insane. Another Brooklyn guy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> what, was he playing music at that time? or He had or... a band. He had I, a band. I... So there was a, segment, there was a segment in his performance where he had the band come out and he would do stuff like he'd sing like Grease Lightning and that's like, you know, right. a couple of like goofy things. I vaguely and recall he, him being a musician. That's right. Yeah. He played, he yeah. plays drums. And okay. actually he's a pretty, he was a pretty good drummer. Okay. Wow. So there was like a, they would play like a, he would get behind the kit and play like Soul Sacrifice from Santana with oh, the wow. band. And, and, he, and he'd do like a little, you know, a little thing or whatever. And then that was Solo. it for the band. So, so yeah. I went out, you know, I knew the guys, I knew some of the guys in the band. I played with the bass player and, uh, you know, I, I saw it at the time as an opportunity that may not ever happen again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, it's like, here's my chance to go on a bus. And, the know, opportunity to experience it. To leave your yeah. job and just run off like to the circus. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, so then like, you know, my, my mother and, you know, my grand my grandfather was just like, you know, my dad was always <laughs> cool about it. He, right. He, yeah. 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 And my grandfather's like, I was a good job. You should never quit. <laughs> so like, and, and and so then I go and play with, you know, like I, I go and do these other things, right? I'm I'm making a living. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. I don't have to ask anybody for a dime, right? You know, and he's should never quit that job. It's a good job. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like so- every time I walk in the house, oh. I go so I go downstairs. Like so now we moved we moved to a different part of Brooklyn and then my grandparents were getting older. So they were downstairs, we were upstairs. Okay. And uh every time I'd walk in to go say hello to my grandparents, my grandma was like, Oh, Mr. John. <laughs> nice of you to stop by. <laughs> I was like, Oh hey grandma. I was like, and she's like, You're working? I was like, Yeah, and she's in Europe for a month. Oh, all right. At least you're working. That's good. <laughs> right that's all that, that matters yeah <laughs> that's amazing and so and then like with my mom right my mom was like never like you know she, she was never into the idea of me you know playing for a living sure yeah so uh, like on the october rest tour typo headlines the nassau coliseum like it was our big hometown show right right yeah yeah bring my mom to the show like she's only seen me perform one time before that Really? She didn't see me play until I was like 26 years old. Really? Like that. So what was the when first we, time she saw you play? Was Typo negative typo? opening up for Danzig. Oh, wow. Wow, that's you know, a pretty like, heavy like show to bring your mom before. to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she had never seen me play. Like, you know, just it's like, just totally against it. Oh, my God. So then we like, you know, uh, it was like in, I guess like 97, whatever. I'm like almost 30 years old. And sure, my mom yeah. comes, I bring her to the show. And uh, there's a bar downstairs and, you know, where everybody's hanging out afterwards. And then she's like, she, she turns around. She goes, it was worth it. I was like, what are you talking about? She goes, well, you doing this. She goes, it was worth it. I was like, oh, thanks. Mom. She, I was like, why do you say it? She goes, well, she goes, you got out. You got to see a little bit of the world sure it's a it's a good thing you did that's the right great thing. that's I was great like, oh, thanks mom that's great <laughs> i mean i think like anything you know it comes from the right place she just doesn't want to watch you go out and suffer and right you know, yeah. have your dreams crushed and you know that whole <laughs> thing I, with her yeah yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's all from the right place but i do understand yeah. that fear of like oh, he's just gonna go out there and have his dreams crushed and yeah. starve and you know all that kind of stuff and you should have a family and be a nice boy and get a job. You know, that's what moms want generally, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But she knew that wasn't for me. Well, of course. So let's talk about when, when the typo thing comes up, because you are, is that you, you're literally um, uh, working for the postal office when this comes up or how does this work? No, no. I was actually at that point I was working. I was a, I worked in a shop like a, like like a pet boy kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I was, you know, I was turning wrenches. I was, you know, doing mechanic work. And Peter sure, used yeah. to bring that that car that he had. I don't know if you've seen the pictures of it. So. I, I remember the car. Yeah, yeah. Totally. He used to bring it to my shop. He used to come hang out. Oh, wow. Okay. And I did some work on that car. And I was like, and would you have known him as Peter from Typo or just some guy? With I knew car? him. I, I knew him as some Peter giant from, guy like, with a, with a, with a, with an old hot rod. Well, when he was in with Carnivore, Carnivore was a, right. Carnivore. Like, yeah. You know, like, even though it wasn't a, you know, like they they had a they had records out, but they weren't really a nationally known band. But sure, yeah. Within our circles, he was you know he was a rock star. He was he was the Brooklyn rock star. Totally. Know? Like uh, I was I loved Carnivore when those totally. records came out. So yeah. and then Carnivore would sometimes rehearse at the studio where we all worked at. We right, all played right. at and stuff. So everybody kind of knew each other. Sure, yeah. And uh, was he older so, than you? Like by yeah. By a few years, uh, enough six, that at the six years, and at six the time, years. that's a lot. That's a big difference. Yeah. Younger, so, yeah. like you know, like you're, you're 18 years old. You're not going to yeah. be hanging out with 12 year old kids. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, like, so we knew each other, and then when typo negative formed, I got to know him a little bit better because I was really good friends with Kenny and and Sal. 
Right, right, right. I was good friends with both of them. So then I was like, you know, we would see each other more often. At that point, he was working for the parks department. I was working for the post office. And we were, right. So how many vacation days do you get? Like, you know, what's your benefit? <laughs> and, you know, like nothing about music at all. We were talking about our jobs. <laughs> Just regular dude talk. Yeah. Like. <laughs> do you get a do you get a a uniform allowance you know <laughs> stuff like that <laughs> hey had you played with kenny uh prior to typo because you were young together yeah, yeah we played so we you... played together for years yeah i figured that was the and case and then when yeah. when uh typo was forming sal brought kenny over to typo i see okay right and that then uh when sal left the band and well you know i knew i knew that he you know that he left and uh, you know, I called them up. I called everybody up and was like, you know, if you're going to do it, if you're going to have auditions, I want to come down because like sure. nobody knew, nobody knew if the band would even, you know, stay together or anything like that. Right, it was right. all very much up in the air. Bloody Kisses had just come out and nobody gave a shit about it. At this Isn't that funny to it, consider, you know, because when you talked earlier about Bloody Kisses and, you know, how the tours became kind of like, like just extended this and then now yeah. there's this. And because that being the record that really sort of must have been a giant turning point. Um, but no At one the sees these, it. yeah, no one sees these things in the heat of the moment. It's just kind of, we made a record and we're gonna go out and do it. Was Sal's leaving the group just sort of like done with the road kind of thing? I was never quite clear on what. Well, it was, uh, Sal had, Josh had produced the first Life of Agony record mm -hmm. and brought Sal in to do the session. Right. Okay. So their record was about to come out and uh, they were going to go for it. Right. They were going to go on tour. And, Sal know, went all, all in on Life of Agony. So That's they, right. They, yeah. right. They, wanted, they wanted Sal to stay in the band. Okay. And then they were going to go for it. And Typo wasn't going to, didn't have plans to do anything like that. Yeah, because you know, parks department you know, and right, yeah, 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 we're right, not yeah, going anywhere. So yeah, Sal right. Yeah. Left, so Sal left the band to like right. you know make a run at it. Yeah, understood. Yeah. And you know, like from where I was standing, I didn't care if they were going to tour or not tour or whatever. It's like mm -hmm. it's, it's one of my favorite bands. I just totally. want to be in the band. You know, totally. I don't give a shit. Play one show, forty shows. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was, and at the time, you know, like when it was coming up, it was like in the holidays are around the corner. You know, we'll play locally, maybe make a little bit extra money for Christmas. You know? Yeah, like yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and, like getting uh, another job or something. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so they did decide to have auditions. And then when they, when I, they were going to give me an audition, me and Kenny would get together and practice the songs before I went on my audition. <laughs> so, so he had your back, definitely. When the, oh yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. totally wanted me to have it. And they, totally. like, you know, as long as the playing was okay, because they knew me. Yeah. So they knew what kind of baggage I came with and stuff like that. So right. They, like, you know, they, they know who I am. You know, they just wanted to make sure that I was capable of. You're from the neighborhood. Music. Yeah. It's not yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. I worked for the band a few times. Like, you know, we did some road trips together and stuff. That's and, right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, so Kenny wanted me to get the, get the, the gig. So sure. we'd go to the rehearsal studio and we rehearsed the whole set. We did it. At, we went to the studio a few times. So then when I went, Went in for my audition. I had a good audition. Great. And then, uh, then they kicked me out, and then they had me come back. Yeah, they kicked you out. I never heard this. I never heard this part of the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never. We don't really talk about it much because it was like I was out of the band for like a week. What happened? Uh, we used to, I just used to argue with Josh all the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that. That early on, you were already arguing with with, with the keyboard player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, you gotta you gotta state your your stake your claim every once in a while, yeah. Yeah. So then, and then I was back in the band, and then that was you know like that was that was it, you know, till up until the end. Right, right, right. And How many years was that run for you? Like I I I, I feel I feel silly for it because it's because it, feel, it feels it like forever, and it feels like the blink yeah. of an eye at the same time to me. And it must be yeah, as well. Yeah, the band I was in the band actively for seventeen years. Yeah, that's that's a great run, man. What a great yeah. run that was. Yeah, and uh, it was up until Peter died. Like it had gotten to a point we felt that we had we had transcended where we had survived a lot of stuff. Yeah, where it was like, you know, at that point it was like, well, Peter's gonna, you know, we're gonna be another Motorhead. Right. Yeah. 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 
put out records. In, in reality, forward. in reality, that probably would have been the best analogy because, you know, had yeah. had Peter's like yeah. everything, everything that Peter had done to himself, you know, like physically and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And he survived it. You're we like, he's not going anywhere. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. You I, know, that, he like transcended to that, you know, Lemmy, Keith Richards territory where it was 100%. like, all right, you know, but yeah. And because up until that point, you know, we were just like, we, we always thought like, you know, the wheels were falling off, just falling off the bus enough where it was right. like, it's going to end. It, it, right. it's, that, that's it. It can't, how can this keep going? Yeah. Yeah. I bet. And yeah. then something would, something would happen where it was like, got another opportunity, got another lease on life. You know, we got right. another, you know, we have another chance to, you know, keep it going. Like we never... We never saw anything as like, you know, like we're going to go out there and conquer the world or like, you know, like, these, you know, like you know, these delusions. Right, right, right. You know, but it was like, wow, we keep the band going and we could still make records and, you know, we could still, you know, we can earn a living, and, you know, like mm -hmm. as you get older, you know, some of those, those things get important. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we had, we had thought that like every day was going to be the last day. And then it's it not... got to a point where it was like, it's never going to end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, never it's the ending. last day and it's never going to end at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is what you are now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But did it musically, like were the wheels falling off on stage or was Peter able to kind of keep it, you know, I've watched you know, a gazillion, well, so much footage. I've I mean, never really I, seen evidence of. There were some things like, you know, where Peter was uh, like, you know, beating himself up pretty hard. And there was a couple of times where we had to like, you know, like shorten sets and things like I that. I see. Was, I see. Yeah. You know, but for the most part, for like a good, like solid, like 85% of the performances, the performances were always consistent, you know, for better or worse. They were, they were pretty consistent. Yeah, I, that's that's what I assume. There was yeah. a few things like, you know, where you knew that Peter was up to no good. And you knew that tonight was going to be a long night or, right. you know, like long night as in it's going to be a short night but it's going to be a very long night <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> short set long night yeah, yeah 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 i i often you know it's that's the hardest thing and and to be like on the sidelines just is there anything i can do to to help to 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 make this you try you know yeah. but like when people get to those situations you know like when when you start to talk about like a like you know the, the you know addiction and you know uh, people the person in it, there's only so much that you can do for them. They have to, they really have to hit their bottom. Like you, yeah. you can, you can help, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can make things available to them for them yeah. to get help. But ultimately, you know, you can't drag them kicking and screaming and put them in rehab. It's not going to work. No, no. It, it never, especially it when they're that done. big. Yeah. Peter would have been yeah. a tough guy to drag anywhere. Yeah. Um, and, it, uh, yeah, but they have to hit their bottom and they have yeah. to get to that point where they make a choice and they make it for the right reason that, you know, well, you know, she'll come back if I go to rehab. Right, right. You know, yeah. that, that's not going to work. It's, and she comes do back it, you and you immediately, do it for yourself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is the, um, but like you said, he sort of, um, like towards the end, he sort of had he found. He got there. Yeah, he, yeah, he got of, there, yeah. It's such a shame, well, isn't there, it? You know? he, um, Yes, it, it it's tragic, but at least, you know, I'm glad that when the one thing that I that I take, you know, comfort in was that like, I was really nervous when he when he passed away, because he was going through some shit, you know, like his cat had just died, and he was very attached to his animals. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it, they were like his children. And sure. So, yeah. Like he was, he was telling me that one of his cats was, wasn't doing very well. And he told me that the cat died. And then I was trying to get in touch with him and he was kind of like off the grid and I'm like, what happened? Like uh -oh. you, you, immediately after like, you know, going through this kind of stuff for so long, you just think that was a trigger. He went, he went right. off the wagon and he's on a binge or whatever. Right. Right. And, uh, but the one thing that I, t that I'm, I'm proud of him for was that, you know, like I was, I was very concerned about his like, you know, toxicology report when it came back after, you know, after he passed away, yep. he, he was, he was clean. Isn't that, you know, like I mean, he, yeah. it's the saddest thing to take solace in that, you know, that, yeah. you know, as horrible he was as that sober is. And he was, he was yeah. committed to it. You know? Yeah, he was, yeah. He, he really, he wanted to do it. And at that time, like, you know, the last time he went to rehab, he went for himself. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, amazing. He, he yeah. wanted to do it. And as the thing that, that, that 
he kind of got scared straight because he got a couple of DUIs. He wound up getting a car, right? He was he was living out in the woods in Pennsylvania, and he gets a oh, car. Oh, right. Like, why why did you buy a car? <laughs> he, hadn't, yeah. he hadn't driven in years. At least he had the wherewithal to like he's like you know I'm getting you know I'm drinking a lot. I'm you know I'm getting too fucked up. I shouldn't be driving. Right, right. At least he had at least he had that. Yeah, and yeah. He, then he got a car. I was like, why'd you get a car? <laughs> oh no, or yeah. nowhere. It's like he, yeah. You know, I have to wait for my girlfriend to come from Brooklyn to go to buy milk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she comes once a week. <laughs> <laughs> then he then he started drinking. Dry. He got two DUIs, and then uh, the, the judge told him, like you know, like it made him wear the ankle bracelet and stuff like oh, that. Oh, it was that was, bad. Yeah. Yeah, and they were like, the judge was like, if I see you here, you're doing six months. If I see you back here. You're oh doing wow. Six months. Yeah. And I I'm not sure, like you know, like you know, what had happened, you know, prior to that, but he was like, I do not want to go to jail. No, no. And he was like, I, he's like, I got, I got to beat this. He's like, I, I got to, you know, be serious about this. And then the last tour that we did, which was funny, the last tour that we did before he passed away, he was playing, he had the ankle monitor on. And he had gotten permission to leave the state, you know, sure. to go work. And they were like, okay, you have to hook up this ankle monitor and it has to dial in every day. Wow. While you're away. And he's like, okay, you know, whatever. And so <laughs> he goes to dial in. We're in like Ohio or something, <laughs> somewhere. And it stops working. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. He's like, oh, shit, I'm going to go to jail. And he, he calls up like, you know, the probation, you know, office or whatever. He's like, I'm trying to call in and the, the ankle monitor is not working. And blah, blah, blah. Is there like, I, I'll go to a police station here. And they were like, uh, you know, sir, you, you're going to have to come in tomorrow. He's like, I'm in Cleveland. Oh <laughs> <You know>? no. <laughs> so we finished the tour. He thinks the minute he gets home, he's going back to jail because he hasn't been, you know, caught. He hasn't been uh, checking in. Alcohol check. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. He's like, it's like, I'm going to jail. I can't believe this. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so we get home and they were like, oh, yeah. He went into the office the next morning. He's like, oh, yeah, it's broken because it's fine. Yeah, but that was it. <laughs> <You know. laughs> wow. That's but stressful. He, but he was like, you know, he was very serious about it. He was like, yeah, and, yeah. And it, like even on that tour, like if there was something like a like any kind of like chatter online or something. Oh yeah. You know, cause there's some there's people making up stories. Oh yeah. I was hanging out with Peter, you know, partying sure, yeah. with Peter last night. Sure, like, yeah. You weren't fucking partying with anybody. dude. No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Peter's like, if my probation officer sees this, I'm going to go to jail. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> he's really like, you know, he's like, I do not want to go back to jail. Uh, of course. And nobody does. And, How long was he right. sober before he passed? Eight months. Wow. Oh, that's yeah, such a shame. Eight yeah. It really, I mean, I, for you, it must be just sort of like, I mean, because there's nothing that sort of is a is a is a bigger period at the end of the sentence, what, you know, than when someone passes away. It's sort of, you know, typo just kind of your whole yeah, your yeah. whole livelihood, your whole world just kind of gets everything yeah. shelved. You're just kind of like, okay, and, and it's like you know, like one of your closest friends too, for like and one of your closest friends, years, exactly. Like, yeah, know, God. it's heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking. Like all yeah. that, all that shit ends like you know, boom, one phone call, everything over. You know, everything's yeah. over. You know. Yeah. It's terrible. And so, so was, uh, what do you do? You go back home and you regroup. You do you even think about music right do? away, or do you just kind of like you know? I didn't. I, I mean, at first, everything was such a shock. Like you really I didn't bet, know yeah. what was going on. Like, no, you know, I bet. Like just the fact that he that he passed away, and it was, you know, like a, the night before he passed away, Kenny and I, right? Peter was living in Pennsylvania, and we had just signed a, a new deal with uh, Napalm records right we right getting, and we were okay we got to start working on a new record kenny and i had found kenny and i we were both living in staten island okay we had found a uh, a lockout rehearsal okay. studio mm -hmm. we we're like all right we found a place peter was scheduled right peter died in april yeah we were taking the studio over in may may 1 peter was moving back to new york may 1st oh, okay to move back Okay. And he was moving to Staten Island. So he was going to be literally living in between me and Ken. Kenny. Cool. That would have been awesome. And Josh was living in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So we were like, all right, so there's three of us here at least. The studio's, you know, 15 minutes away. And all this was going to happen May 1st. And we found the studio literally the night before he passed away. And I was at the studio trying to call him. 
to tell him that we found a place. Right. And I couldn't get in touch with him. And so I was just like, hey, you know, whatever, found a place, call me when you can. And the next day, uh, like uh, Peter Hatch had a landline because he lived out in the he lived out in the woods in yeah. Scranton. Yeah. He, didn't, he was like, you know, he he goes, I had, he goes, I got this number. He's like, you know, if my cell doesn't work, he's like, you know, you can always call me on this one. Sure. And I remembered that, so I was like, I called him at the house. This was the day he died. Oh my god. And uh, he didn't answer the phone. His girlfriend answered the phone. Okay. And his, his girlfriend was his uh, counselor in rehab. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, uh, so I knew her because when Peter checked himself in, Peter had her reach out to me for like, you know, background on Peter, you know, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. adulting stuff. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so she answered the phone and I was like, Hey, you know, it's Johnny. And like, you know, tried to get in touch with Peter last night. She's like, oh, Peter's in bed, sick. He's, he's not feeling good. I was like, and I knew that, like, you know, with, with his cat and everything, I was like, anything going on out there that I should know about? Right, right. And something, you know, anything happened? She's like, no, no, it's nothing like that. He's, he's literally sick in bed. Oh, okay. And uh, she's like, you know, he, he said to say sorry because he, he, didn't, he didn't get back to you last night, you know, whatever. I was, mm-hmm. like, I was like, all right, fine. I said, just tell him we found a place. Call me when you feel better. Right, right. Yeah. And that was it. And then a few hours later, I got a call from his sister saying that he had passed away. Wow, that's yeah. so crazy. You know, it's like it is. It is. It's it's it was it was it was surreal. A young man uh, too. It's just you know. Yeah, he was only only forty eight. It's crazy. Yeah. And uh, when you consider how much life you've lived since Peter's passing, it really really makes you realize, you know, wow. I mean, like just young. He's a young man. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, uh, but even that, like, you know, like for, you know, like just for anyone, like not even him, like with what he did to his body and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Had it been like a year or two earlier, a year earlier, I wouldn't have been surprised at all. Getting that phone call. Right. Right. I see what wouldn't, it wouldn't have shocked me at all. Yeah. You're like, yeah. And, uh, but at the time, you know, like, it, you know, with speaking to him as often as I did and like, you know, I'd see him where's, you know, his headspace was and stuff mm-hmm. and how, how he was making an effort to, you know, better himself and like, sure. Take things a little more seriously. Yeah. That was the shock. It was like, you know, now he dies after yeah. all that shit he did to himself and survived all of it or his organs and everything. <laughs> His liver repaired itself. I know it's crazy. <laughs> you know, I he guess... had a weak heart. He, he had right. a, he had, a um, he had an irregular heartbeat, which was, mm. I think they attributed that to the substance abuse and stuff. Right, and the lasting was it just the lasting effect of all that? Right, he, just like the last. Yeah. It was. It really was like the last thing I was expecting. Yeah, it's so yeah. crazy to me. It's like, mm. I mean, it's it's brutal, and then. And then, like I say, then all of a sudden, you're, are you, did you immediately go like, okay, we'll have sticks, we'll travel, like, well, uh, I was, uh, put yourself out there, or, or was it like it a, happened? It was um, like you know, I was, I was playing with Danzig at the time. Oh, so you were well. actually kind of you you were kind of bouncing in and out of uh, Danzig. Yeah, as I, was, well. I was like for for a few years, I was going back and yeah. forth. It kind of worked itself out great because yeah. like the year that typo wasn't working, Danzig was working. You know, I was they thinking about back, you. They you, were going you, back and forth. You mentioned it when you were talking about Glenn, he would say, play this one like Bill Ward. Play this one like, like he, what were his references? Yeah, Bill yeah, Ward. Three. three. Bill yeah. Ward, John Bonham, Phil Rudd. Phil Rudd. Okay. That was the third one. Yeah. I always remember that. And I said, I was telling that story once. Uh, like Glenn asks Johnny to be, this one is this guy, this guy, this guy. That's so funny. And those are all three amazing references. And immediately you go, okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And it works, it works well for what he wants. Like, you know, like he, like he, he doesn't, he doesn't get very like, you know, technical as to like, you know, doing stuff like, you know, like for a drum pattern or whatever, but that's what he refers to. And so I kind of know what he's looking for. Like sure, he yeah. wants the Bill Ward thing. He wants something with a little swing to it. Yeah. You know, Bonham's a little bit more aggressive yeah. in terms of, you know, playing and Phil Rudd, it's just, yeah, kick just on the one, you know. Yeah, kick it there. Four on the there. floor. Some songs are just just kick. Don't really? like don't play anything. Just put a kick. <laughs> <laughs> That's and that. Okay. What yeah. was that like? Two thousand two or something that you started playing with? With I started playing with him in two thousand two. Yeah. 
damn that's a long so playing with almost, them for almost 20 years now. almost 20 years yeah so that's amazing so what was that what was that experience like having been like you know in one thing that was sort of like you know you were a member of that thing for 17 years and then you're kind of like yeah. in glenn's thing is it radically was it must have been surreal in its own way no because i mean it started out innocently enough like when i reached out when i I mean, it was funny. Like I had seen that uh, Joey C had left Danzig to go play in Queens of the Stone Age. Right, right. Yeah, okay. And I knew that Glenn had dates coming up rather soon. Yeah, yeah. So I I knew I had, there were some guys that used to work for Typo that were working for Danzig. Okay. So I, I tried I tried reaching out to them to see if he needs, if he needs somebody just to fill in. I was like, oh, it'd be cool to go play with Danzig. Like, totally, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, who knows what could come of it or whatnot. It, and uh, while I was trying to reach out to them, Glenn's assistant called me. Okay, interesting. So they like, were already they were already thinking and, of you. So I was like, "Oh, did you speak to Jay? Like, you know, what if he's like, no? He's like, you know, we got you know, we got your name from somebody else and blah blah blah." I was like, "Oh, because I've been trying to get in touch with you guys." So we were like trying to like almost misconnected but connected, <laughs> and. and uh, so I, I went out to LA, I auditioned for the band and they decided they, they had a guy that was local. Okay. They had a couple of shows, a couple of local shows coming up and then they were going to Europe for a couple of weeks and they decided to stick with the, with the local guy. Okay. Yeah. The local guy didn't work out. And then they called me up and were like, can you do the tour? And, uh, can you be available for the next 19 years? <laughs> well, it, it, yeah. it, it started weird at yeah. first. You know, because it was, um, I did the, I did that tour. We did a couple of other shows and then he, he got another drummer. He's like, you know, he wanted to have his own guy. He didn't want to have to right. deal with, you know, uh, scheduling and, you know, yeah, yeah, with yeah. all the bullshit that comes with that. You're already in a, another very successful yeah, band. I'm in, it's, I'm yeah, in, it's I'm tough, in yeah. typo and it's, you yeah. know, typos. It's, it's like, it's like dating, a, it's like dating a married woman or something. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, 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 good yeah, analogy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so and then he brought in, he brought in Bevan, Bevan Davies. Right. Uh, he was like, you know, he's going to be, you know, after these shows, he's, he's going to play with us. I was like, all right, cool. You know, great. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good times, you know, mm -hmm. thanks. Yeah. And so then Bevan was in the band for like a year, a little bit over a year, did the, did the circle of snakes record with them. And then after okay. the record was done, Glenn called me back. Hmm. He was like, Hey, what are you doing? You know, he was like, uh, he was like, um, I'm thinking of uh, replacing, you know, Bevan. Oh, okay. I'd like you to come in. It's like, okay. And then that was, that was it. You know, we just, I've been there since. <laughs> how many records, how many Danzig records have you played on? I was trying to do the math I've on played that. On, actually, for, for the 20 years, I've played on two records. Isn't that interesting? Two, <laughs> two, two, uh, two records and two songs on the last record. There you go. Wow. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think he's only done like three records. Since. Yeah, it's not not a high output, but, but good yeah, stuff he, nonetheless. Yeah. And um, we... Uh, yeah, I guess you know a lot of it is logistics because I'm not in California. Exactly, so, and that does make a big difference. I mean, yeah, you, you, you you're know, not going to way records, right? I'm not going to move to California to no. work on a record every you know eight years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uproot your entire life just for yeah. two two months or whatever to make a record and then shut it all down again. I thought yeah. I thought about moving to. We had discussed when we moved out of New Jersey before we wound up in Texas, right? Because yeah, Bernadette Bernadette has fibromyalgia and rheumatoid arthritis. So That's right. Like, yeah. Once once Anya finished high school, she was like, "I'm out." Yeah. Like I, I'm not doing another winter here. You know, I can't do it because the cold really affects her. Sure. Yeah. And so and is that it has, has has got texas it, she got it. has texas solved a lot of that it hasn't eradicated it but it's helped okay great that's all it's that matters, yeah. and uh so when the the opportunity like so we were talking about like you know she was like i'm out yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like i'm going somewhere warm you can come but i'm going <laughs> somewhere warm <laughs> i appreciate that yeah so so we were talking about like you know like whatever various places like you right know, yeah talking about texas or arizona like you know like the mm -hmm. southwest somewhere yeah yeah you know like california i was like well i was like 
like at the end of the day, I was like, you know, if most likely I could probably get the most work if I yeah. lived in California. It would yeah. be probably yeah. benefit me the most. But I was like, you know, to live there is just like so damn expensive. Yeah, I know. It's... Forget about ever like, you know, like I don't know what I would have to do to pull off buying a house in California. Yeah, it's tough. It it you know But the question, like, you know, the whole discussion got uh, you know, got taken off the table because she got a job offer here. Right, right. And, yeah. And she she came down and my sister in law lives here also. So that was another like, you know, thing that just made this more attractive to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, Oh, well, I guess I, I couldn't be a total douche about it. I was like <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I, I'm not going to say Johnny. I to go. Johnny Kelly goes to Texas. <laughs> the next chapter yeah, of your life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's talk quickly because I don't want to, you know, keep you too long. But I definitely want to get into this quiet riot thing because that has been like, you know, the giant topic of conversation. Um, it, you know, overall, I mean, just it's just you know, I mean, it's just it's fascinating to me because you know, I don't know if you remember, but I was we were doing a, a hookers and blow show together. For those that don't know, that's Dizzy yeah. Reed and, and Alex Grassi. And we were playing at the whiskey, remember? And then Frankie got up and played that night because Frankie had played yeah. on. He that, played on Dizzy's record. On Dizzy's record. So, right, yeah. and it was one of the last, it was basically the last time I ever saw Frankie, unfortunately. And uh, right. what an amazing dude and what an amazing player. Um, yeah, he's a monster. It was yeah. a mo he was a monster. And, and the weird thing was, not weird really at all, but it's sort of like in the last chapter of his life, so the last 20 years of his life, he suddenly had become like, you know, this hugely respected, like, like that guy can throw down. Like we always kind of knew Frankie Benelli was a monster, but it was sort of like, yeah. it really sort of went up like several notches at some point. I mean, he always, he was always held in high regard. In my Absolutely. Like he, was, he was always one of my favorite drummers. So that was Absolutely. like, you know, they're, they're, as far as him getting his due, it was yeah. overdue. A hundred percent. And that's what uh, I mean. Like the last 20 years, it suddenly seemed to be like people were like recognizing his, his talent yeah I, I i maybe it was just people finally like you know taking a minute to yeah. you know, see it but i, I think mean, he was so, always yeah. a phenomenal always a phenomenal always, player yeah. like always you know and uh you know and i i was he was always i was always aware of of what he was up to of course yeah and uh like you know like what uh, aware of his playing his playing had a yeah. big impact on it. i remember mm -hmm. like you know playing in one of my first bands he's playing you know bang your head me too like, me know, too yeah. no yeah. brainer no, yeah, exactly. And uh, it, like in that kind of music and stuff like that, he stood out far mm -hmm. above. Mm -hmm. And uh, even like you know, like the circles where you know where I made my bones. Yeah, you know, he was it, it, guys like you know guys from the, that side of the you know that side of the fence. They yeah. they all knew that he's he's a great drummer. The real deal, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, he he was he was the real yeah. deal, and mm -hmm. uh, you know it was kind of nerve wracking at first you know to like i mean it still is so you started with the fill-in thing which makes things a hell of a lot easier when you're just kind of like well i'm not replacing him yeah, i'm filling exactly. in so you're yeah. you're kind of like okay well i'll learn the songs i'll you know I, the thing is i know you would kill it anyway because you're you know you're you're, you're well, it, see, it seems like the way the way that i play kind of fits in totally you know, well for you know for that for that type of playing totally and uh i mean but there's still like you know like some of the stuff like it's you know like watching the videos of him with the live with the live shows it's a, it's a fucking drum clinic and it's like <laughs> I, yeah. I, it's, like I, I i tell like you know friends of mine and stuff i'm like i was like you know it's like oh you're playing in choir right you know that, that's great you know whatever what's it like i was like dude it's a lot of playing i was gonna say yeah yeah you, it's not like you're just gonna go phone it in you're like you gotta right i, I you know, basically made a career out of playing at like you know 80 beats 60 beats per minute and now i'm like doing all this stuff like, <laughs> and it, it is it's a lot of playing which is like it, it's really challenging and it's, and it's a lot of fun totally you know but it is like you know you always have to be aware of stuff and it's like it's because he did like all these little things and you and you know coming in like you know for for the for the other guys I want it to be what they're what they're comfortable with of course yeah yeah you know, which is the live set that they've been playing for like whatever 15 16 years totally so like, yeah yeah you want you want to come in and you want to do the you know like when you do that you want to be able to do it where they're you know where the machine just keeps moving yeah whenever you're filling in you want it to almost be as if the person you're filling in for you know that they don't notice that it's he's not he's there, not there right. yeah exactly yeah. as as best as you can do and i've been in this situation many times too right where, you know 
<laughs> like I remember, uh, like the first show I did with them, like it was, uh, it was in uh, Dallas. Oh, okay. And at, like at the time, I knew I knew Frankie was was sick and uh, right. he was playing, I, and I was like, I was like Frankie's really doing the show, like you know, talking to Alex. He's like, yeah, he's doing it. And I was like, I was like, look, I said I'm going to be there anyway to see you guys. I was like, if Frankie needs any help on anything, you know, whatever. I know he's, you know, like he's, he's going to be in rough shape. Yeah. I was like, I'll help him. I was like, you know, shit, I'll, I'll meet you at the airport. I'll carry his fucking bags for him. And like, you know, whatever. I'll set up his kit, right. know, do sound check, you know, do whatever he needs to do so that all he has to do is just get on stage and play. Totally. And I was like, and I'll keep, I, like, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll text from that night. I was just like, you know, and he's like, all right. You know, they were like, all right, that's cool. It's a good idea. Great. Right. I was like, okay, excellent. And I was in New York and Alex calls me up two days before the show. He's like, can you do the show? I was like, wait, what? Right, right. It's so you've got like forty eight hours you know, like, to like learn the show, learn the yeah. whole set. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Was, I was like, I was like, seriously. I was like, you know, Frankie's not coming. He's like, yeah, he's not. Gonna, you know, he's mm -hmm. not up to it. Right. And now this is the first time, like you know, whatever in Quiet Riot's history, you know, with Frankie and the Band, first time he's missing the show. Totally. And, you know, yeah. It's and it's not like it's some like you know like little shit show. It was like there was like thousands of people. They were opening. We're we're playing with Rat. Right, right, right. And uh, and I was like. You know, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's all you could do, right? Just go, okay. I was like, yeah, sure. I was like, send me the set list, you know. And I was like, I, I bought everything on iTunes. I'm on the plane, everything I'm doing, like listening to the songs and stuff like that. Now it's the show day and they're in the trailer. I pull up, I drove there, you know, because it's, it's right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I walk into the trailer. Like I've met Chuck and James maybe a couple of times. And right. I, I open up the trailer door and I'm like, guys, this was a terrible idea. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what I was thinking. I was like, this is, this is, no, this is wrong. This is bad. Oh, and you no. see like, like Chuck and James, like everybody turns white. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I bet. I mean? bet. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I was oh, like, oh, man. Did you chart out through. stuff? Did you chart out all the shit or as much as you could? Or are you that guy? I, I, I'm I not could, that guy. I didn't, I didn't have I didn't have anything written down. I okay. was just like, all right, I just I was like just really concentrating on how the song started and how they ended. Like the yeah. segues going the segues going into each song. If like sure. you know, this stop, you stopped here, whatever. Mm -hmm. So we actually amazingly enough, we got through the whole show without any like major train wrecks. I right. mean, there were mistakes left and right, you know, like little sure. miscues and stuff. Sure. But there wasn't anything like, you know, like drastic or, you know, right. like, like really, you know, like that really stuck out. And we were like, I was like, all right, whew, you know, dodge that one. And the audience to some what, you know, is. They probably, and most of them probably didn't even know. Like, you know. Well, like, that, yeah, they if it, largely don't know, but they're also probably pretty forgiving when they understand that the, the circumstances well, I, that were occurring. I don't even, they, I mean. Whether I they did or people, didn't, yeah. I think people will call me Frankie. Right, 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 right. Knew, Can you, you know, sign like, this uh, metal health album, Frankie? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I put on a scarf and some big glasses, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. No one would know the difference. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. And uh, and then that just like it just we got through that, and it was like, all right, like you know, whatever, you know, cool. talk to you later, Alex. You know, nice to meet you guys. Like that exactly, kind of thing. exactly. Yeah. And uh, you know, glad I could help. And mm -hmm. then it was like I got a phone call you know, whatever, a couple of weeks later, can you do this? Can you do this? You know, Frankie has treatment, like, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And by that point, were you like sort of sitting with the set a bit more or you had to kind of completely like another 48 well, hours? I of... mean, <laughs> yeah. well, I got to like, you know, I, then yeah. I started like, you know, doing some more studying, you know, finding sure. stuff on YouTube and like, you know, really trying to get to, you know, trying to pick out the little pieces yeah. that I could, you know, sure. to try to make it more, uh, you know, genuine. Yeah. And, uh, but it was like you didn't you didn't know there wasn't like well all right you know Frankie's done touring you know you're going to be the guy for the next you know whatever six months you know right whatever, right 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 know. yeah it was always it was you know just going from week to week can you do this week can you do that week you know and then it was like are you available for this month you know Frankie's going to be home until whatever and then they had shows in California Frankie's going to do the shows in California because he doesn't really have to travel and, you know. right yeah and I was just like you know what I was like just you know, let me know when you need me. You know, like, That's you know, I, I know, I know the set well enough now. If you need me, call me, you know, like that mm -hmm. kind of thing. I had, I had some other touring lined up, you know, with some of the other bands. I was like, you know, I was like, I'm available here, here, and here. Like, you know, like I just have a couple of things in between the rest of the year I'm open. So whatever you need me for me. That's great. And then when, uh, 
before Frankie passed away, uh, he was trying to get, uh, you know, everything in order so that the band would continue. He wanted the band to keep going after yeah. he passed. Yeah. And then when that, when that came, then it was, uh, you know, he told Alex to call me. He wanted wow. me to, he wanted me to do it after he was gone. Oh, uh, that's, that's such a heavy, you know, but wonderful thing, you know, that, you know, yeah, it, it that kind of confidence an honor. Now, here's, here's mm -hmm. a guy that I grew up like, you know, like had a big influence on me when I, totally. was, when yeah, I, yeah. When I was a kid. And now it's like, you know, now he, he wants me to uh, be, you know, carry on his legacy. Totally. You know? And, but the circumstances totally suck. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's kind of like getting a big prize, but it had to come at such yeah. an awful, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. And it was like, uh, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm retiring, you know, I, you know I'm getting out of it, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. Here, here's what I'm presenting, you know, to, yeah. to, keep, to keep the yeah. quiet, quiet riot name going. No, it's, you know, you know, he's passing away. And he's like, you know, he knows, like, you know, he's in the midst of, you know, meeting the end totally like, oh, well, this is what i want like you know this, wow this, 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 i mean god bless him to be so you know coherent yet, yet so giving in the fact that it was sort of like the music lives on it's the funniest thing about music is yeah. it's really it makes us makes guys like frankie benali immortal you know what i mean like that yeah those, for those sure. songs live yeah. on forever you know it's like and it, it is and it's like you know like a you know to think about like, you know, you see it on, on social media a lot. It's, you know, there's the whole debate on, on the value of music. Yeah, sure. You know, there's, there's a long debate about it, especially, you know, going so long without live shows and stuff. And then yeah. there's, there's been the debate about the actual, like, you know, like a, a how, we, uh, how we acquire music and, uh, you know, like putting mm -hmm. value on that. And I was trying to think about it. Like, a, like I was watching this um a new documentary from my National Geographic about 9-11. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I've been watching one a bunch day, of that one, stuff lately One day too. in America, I believe it yeah. was called. But anyway, it was uh, it was a really powerful documentary. And it was, it was, I think it was like five hours long. Oh, is that right? We watched the whole thing. Yeah. Wow. Were you guys there? Well, I was you... in New York when, yeah. I mean, I wasn't in the city that day. I was supposed to be in the city that day. But oh, my God. And, uh, but, um, but yeah, I was, I was in New York. I, you know, Damn lived through all of it you know had friends that passed away in, in the buildings and stuff so brutal i had friends that were working there was a stage set up in between the two towers on the, on the are you serious the yard yeah and I, I, that's I the first i've people. heard about that wow well there was a stage and they yeah, were yeah. performances like you know during the day and stuff and they, sure yeah yeah i knew friends that were working you know that were crew there and they were you know hiding under the under the stage when you know stuff was when Ugh. the planes hit, you know, the debris oh my coming God. down and stuff. That's horrible. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, you know, you lived in New York. You, you couldn't get away from it. Of and course, it was, yeah. It was in your face. You know? uh, but, like, the thing it was, uh, one of the things that I found so powerful about this documentary was there was no narrating and there was no music. Is that right? So there was there was nothing there to create any kind of like drama, like, you know, to build up yeah. a, seg yeah. a segment in this document. It was all, it was almost like literally, it was interviews with people that were, that were uh, either survived or were, you know, first responders and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there was, um, and it was just raw footage. Great. What, where did you watch this on? What platform did you watch this on? Uh, I think it was on National Geographic. Oh, okay. I'll look, yeah. I'll look for it. Yeah. That's, and it was, that's such that's an interesting thing was. when you, when you bring up that point, because, you know, you know, cause soundtrack, you know, is subtly making you sad, you know, play somber music right. or, it, or, it, the, it, or it creates an atmosphere or tension or, you yeah. know, any of that kind of stuff. And, and it's very interesting when you take that away and just leave it raw, it's yeah, even, it has its own powerful effect uh, yeah. without music. Yeah. But that does bring up an interesting point about the, the, the importance of music when you can yeah completely like remo a, I, remove I was it like you know? thinking about it i was like well i was like if if things go a certain way i was like it, like could there you know whatever i was like whatever getting my whatever philosophical deep moment you know where it was like what if there is no music i was like i was like music is such a part of everyone's you know like 99.9 percent .9 
of people. It's part of their very fabric of their daily life. A hundred percent. Yeah. Whether, yeah, whether yeah. they're paying attention to it, you know, being cognizant of it or not. A hundred percent. And and you think about it, it's like this could never go away. I mean, they, no. they could do they come up with like you know ways to you know circumvent you know certain aspects of it or whatever, but it's always going to be there. I, I agree. It's, it's, I think it's the interesting thing about it's the interesting thing about looking at the long term, the long game of music where something like Quiet Riot, you know, yeah. to, case in point being like the conversation of like, OK, well, now you've got Rudy returning, which I think is really interesting, yeah. um, which gives it another route back into, you know, because Kevin's gone. Yeah. Frankie's yeah. gone. But the music lives on. And I think that's really fascinating to me that you know as it the music is 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 the most important part in a funny way you know i mean as much as we all I, 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 we are I'm all connected start, to the music starting musicians. to see that like I, yeah. I try to keep i try to keep objective to a, yeah. an objective perspective on what's going on because you know I've, I've been approached many times over the years about doing something you know with typo and yeah yeah like, i was going to ask been you been about like, that like is there, what kind of like tribute type shows or tribute records or any sort of like multiple vocalists? I can't imagine. No, how many like times. you know, like it's something like that. I've, I've there's been a lot of I've been approached a lot about it, and it was just like it just doesn't feel right with me. It just doesn't sit right. It's like you know, I appreciate like, that. Without, yeah. without Peter there, it's just it just seems like it's impossible to do. Yeah, and I can't and imagine the audience. Uh, as much as you know, you know, we we live in an in an industry where right, yeah. people are being replaced all the time. You know, I mean, yeah. there's versions of bands out there that, but but Peter is and, such a, you know, that's a that's that's a big and hole. It's to a, fill. And you, and you like the thing, like the thing, the way that I see it is like, okay, all right, so if if we were to do something of a of a typo tribute. Mm -hmm. And then we brought, and you, a lot of people have been asking for this for a long time. Sure. Bring it in. We bring it and we present it. And then people will be going like pitchforks and fire in front of the house. <laughs> How can we yeah. do that? <laughs> yeah, know exactly. Peter. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter who that is. He's not Peter. Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, it's, uh, that's a tough so, one. Like, the, the one thing that I was like, you know, because you speculate on it, you know, it's human nature to do that. And it was, I always thought about like, if I was, if I was to do something like that, you know, like with typos music, it would have to be something completely different. I think that's, yeah. You know, it would have to be, it would be something like, of course, I think Peter needs, it's important. And I, I think Peter needs to be celebrated for sure. Absolutely. For what, for what, for what he gave the world. Absolutely. And the, and the impact that he had, you know, he deserves that. Mm-hmm. But to have somebody step on a stage and try to imitate him, I don't think is serving, is not really celebrating him. I could, you know, if, if it was a night, say, you know, and you had like multiple vocalists coming out and, and just, yeah, and, totally and not, and, and yeah. it doesn't have to be dudes coming out doing a Peter Steele impression. I, just, I always thought it would be do something like, you know, do a totally different interpretation of the songs that have like, you know, a girl singer or something like absolutely, that. Absolutely. Like, yeah. you know, like, like do some kind of something different with the songs where the songs are still celebrated, his legacy is celebrated, but it's not just like this blatant cash grab like you know like something like that I, I i i don't think our fans would be into that it is a tough conversation because yeah. you know there are people i mean there's going to be a giant chunk of people who would probably be very excited about you know the, the legacy right, carrying yeah. on but there is you know that it's a tough one you know i mean i so guess like and then, and then people will counter that like well you're playing quiet riot <laughs> <laughs> so, true why were you, know, you playing quiet right but you won't do anything with typo and it's like well it's a little to me it's a little different that's, you know there's a different you're not a different emotional yeah. you know you, you you're in the wrong place to have any perspective on that conversation because <laughs> yeah. you're so like it's way too subjective for you to get any yeah, sort of objective yeah. point of view on that yeah and i'm just always like you know i'm like, I'm like you know what it's just i'm just not ready for it no and there's whatever, nothing wrong whatever, with not being ready for it it is whatever no. that whatever that it is i'm just yeah. i'm not ready for it no i understand 100 mm -hmm. it's it's it, these are very adult it's so funny talking to you because it's like talking about peter talking about frankie talking about 9 11 <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like, <laughs> kind of a dark conversation <laughs> <laughs> well no but i think it's really important because i think it's what i think is the most interesting is watching the lasting effect of you still getting up and you know, wherever I am on Friday night, I, it's time I, to play the I, drums. I remember yeah. having this, I remember having this conversation, you know, like, uh, like right after Peter died, uh, 
Danzig had a big radio show in Arizona. And there was a thing because Peter died in, in Pennsylvania and he was being buried and uh, he's being buried in New York. Sure. It, it took his family a couple of weeks to get his body. Uh. It wasn't just like, uh, like, you know, like if he had died in New York, you know, you, you know he, he, the funeral home would set things up. You're talking like within a span of a week, everything, yeah. you know, like done, you know, mm-hmm. like they had the service, they, they, you know, they had the funeral, they buried him and stuff like that. So Glenn had a show, like this big radio show, the in Arizona, in Phoenix. Okay. But it was it was a few weeks after Peter died, and he was like, and he and he gave you know he was he was uh, nice enough where he offered he's like, if you want to cancel this, he's like, it's totally cool. Oh wow, that's amazing. He's like, you know, he's like, if you're not ready, he's like, I totally understand. It's cool. And I was like, oh, I was like, you know what? I was like, I was like, you know, it's it's it'll be a few weeks by then, you know, and. You know, I was like, it should be fine. You know, right. and there's almost like, you know, probably something almost, got, almost therapeutic about getting to do stuff. it. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and I remember being at, at the festival, which like, so anyway, Peter's funeral had to, like, it took so long for them to get, his, to get his body to New York and stuff like that. I had to fly to California the day he was being buried. Oh, so I went to the church. I went to the service and then I, I didn't go to the, cemetery I, I went to california and um so well, i'm at the show and then you know like people are coming up to me and stuff you know people that know that i type sure. on whatever you know sure yeah yeah you know, small talk you know lending condolences and stuff and i was kind of like it kind of felt weird being there. i bet yeah, yeah you know and i was like i was like you know i was like i wonder like you know and like you know for the next few weeks after he died i was like you know where's my life going like you know what it, you know, where's, where's my place now? Yeah. Yeah. You know, for, for, you know, for my, almost my entire adult life, it's been Johnny from Type 1. Totally. So that, that's been the constant through my adult life. And now that's gone. And it's like, well, what do I do? And then we, you know, so we kept the, the dandy show and I'm there and stuff. And it's like, it's a weird day. And then uh, it's time for us to go on. And, you know, the intro tape rolls and it stopped playing. And it's like, this is my place. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I was like, I was like, I didn't die. No, no. You know, it was like, is it, is it, you know, do, because, you know, because, you know, my, you know, my, my friend, my, my bandmate and stuff like that, because he died. Does that mean I have to, that I have to do it also? Right. You just stop. Yeah. I was like, is, I was like, is that, is that the right thing to do? Or is that the fair thing to do? It was like, you know, like, you know, and it, it, the question answered itself the minute the intro tape started rolling and I started playing. I, I, was, like, like, I, I, I was like, I played, I was, I, I played drums and, you know, m- made music before I knew Peter. And it's, you know, this is what I'm supposed to be doing after he's gone. You know, and I think that's, it's, it's, I think that's more than evident now. Like, you know, like I said, there's those moments in your life where you're like, well, maybe it's time to think about, you know, <laughs> you know, right, spru- you know sprucing like up that resume and, you know, going, but then you're like, but then opportunity sort of presents itself and you find yourself. It's, still doing it's it, like you know? the mafia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's like the mafia. You try to get out, they pull you, pull you back in. Exactly. It's, it's, and but, then as, it, the thing that's frightening about it is that like, you know, like it's, it's cool that these opportunities come up and stuff like that. But the thing that really burns me out as I'm getting older is the hustle. Yes. You know, yeah. the hustle, it's like, all right, I got nothing going on in December. Boop, 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 boop. Right, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Make, I know. Like, yeah. Try to make something happen, you know, yeah. like, and that, that part is a total drag. Yeah. It and can it, be for sure. Yeah. You know, while it's fun. Like I, I always loved it. My friends always called me like a drum slut when I was younger. <laughs> I, always loved, I always loved playing with different people and like, yeah, you know, yeah. trying to do different things. Like I never totally, wanted yeah. to, I never wanted to play in two bands that sounded exactly the same. I was totally. like, what's the point? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, like like when you know doing stuff outside of typo negative. It's like I'm in typo negative. I don't. Yeah, exactly. Why would yeah, I want right. to play? Why would yeah. I want to play with somebody else that sounds the type that sounds like typo negative? I have that right here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. then typo has gone, and I'm like, you know, I want to play in a band that has more typo negative elements in it now because that's gone. <laughs> Well, I could see but, someone like, like you, you know, like putting something together and then being able to play like the odd typo type song or something, you know, where it's part of your... It. Well, yeah. well, I play with Kenny in, in the band Silvertune. Of we, course, we yeah. We discussed like, you know, like 
we've done it in the past where we would like, you know, take a little snippet of a song. And, People like, must go bananas some, when you do that. Sometimes. And, yeah. you know, I mean, there were times where that band, our band would play with Peter's band, Carnivore, and then we'd have Peter come out while we were playing and play a typo song and people would go fucking crazy. I bet, I bet. Which yeah. was fun. You know? Yeah. And, uh, but, but it was uh, like you always wanted to, like you know, like you always wanted to do something different. But it's you know, like as I get older, the hustle in it is the yeah. part that's a grind. And the you hustle know, like is such I, a big I'm, part I'm of thankful. it. Yeah. yeah, I'm really thankful at this age, and especially like you know, like with all the ups and downs of my career. My career on paper is actually pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, that's that's the thing. Yeah, it's like, and like I say, to I'm, still be still be doing something as as high profile as Quiet Riot. Uh, the, yeah, I, it's I, I've been yeah. I've been pretty lucky that way. You know, Very it's lucky. like now it's like it seems now like you know now my later the, the later part of my uh, my career. I'm more into like playing now, like, you know, learning yeah. more about drums and how to play, yeah. you know, stuff like that. I've gotten into, you know, teaching a little bit. And so now I want, I want to, you know, share that with other people and, uh, you know, like the whole art of it, I'm starting to pay attention more to the art of it instead of being the drummer in, in the band. I know what you mean. Yeah. Cause it's, you know, I mean, well, that's the thing is there's a certain amount of like luck is one thing, but ability is a yeah. big part of it. Being a yeah. good hang is a, is a huge part of it. Yeah. You know that as much as anybody else. Yeah. And I think that that's why you're still doing it and people, you're still getting the calls and, and December will, uh, December will fill up. <laughs> <laughs> like that'll be like, Oh, you know, maybe I can plan a vacation with my wife or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Or, or that's all I need to do to make the calendar fill up plan a vacation yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah, sweetheart yeah. i have to cancel our vacation exactly <laughs> then all of a sudden the phone starts ringing you're like oh, yeah. yeah just when you so book I, those christmas flights or whatever you're gonna do. right exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly all right dude, have, well, thank uh, you so much for yeah I mean, yeah there's a, it happens every so december have, to me yeah i actually we have like you know like uh flight credits that we can't use Oh yeah, because you can never like get every away. time, like oh, let's let's plan this, let's do this. No, I don't know, I don't know what's happening. This I know time. you, you can't book anything because you might be working. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, you know, and you'll yeah, like it just as much as mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless him. Todd, anyway, man, a lot of fun, man, it was Thank a lot you. of fun. I really can't wait to do it in person. Like I said, we were both in Hollywood on the same night, but um, missed it by that much by that much but i was hoping like during sound check we would be able to cross paths but i remember going by the whiskey when you and i was like there's no way i'm going in there it's bananas like they're not they're not going to get me in that place so you guys are playing the whiskey at gogo which must have been a blast yeah you were next door and we were at the and I, was, and I was with alex and alex and i we were like in the whiskey like i i literally right we i flew to to uh california that that afternoon literally took a a, a cab from burbank airport to the whiskey perfect and i was yeah. in there all afternoon oh uh, yeah yeah like you know like getting you know getting shit together and, and exactly uh, yeah it's show day it's yeah it's, it's hard i didn't to get do to go else. to the hotel i didn't get to check into my room until like eight o'clock oh wow i, I literally yeah. went to the hotel took a shower and went back to the to the venue to play but it was like that whole afternoon i was like i was telling us i gotta meet him yeah i gotta meet him I, yeah, I, yeah. I was like he's just a couple of doors away and it was like he was, he was like being in touch with, with with your guys like is he there yet is he there yet? <laughs> and then it was just getting too late it was, it, and i was like i was like i was like we'll meet him another time it's like i gotta go to the hotel and you gotta eat you gotta get a shower you yeah gotta play i was a like show. I, yeah, I, yeah. I gotta i gotta get ready yeah. I was yeah. like, we'll meet him another time and, oh yeah it's a small world trust me <laughs> anyway man thanks so much say hi to the to the girls thanks. for me your ladies for me yeah, thank and, you i will and uh <laughs> we'll we'll see you somewhere i don't know where but um, uh, the paths will cross i hope to see you soon i miss you you too love you brother take care <laughs> all right bye bye, bye buddy.